All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It is Saturday, August 10th. We have a 16-game MLB slate to dive into in today's video, like we always do. When I go through each and every one of these games, I'm going to give you my lean on the side. I'll give you my lean on the total. We'll talk about any other plays, like player props, that we like within the game as well. But as always, guys, all of my final plays, if you do want to fade me, all of my plays are going to be in the pinned comment. Yesterday, not the most fadeable night. We shall take it because... If you know, you know, two nights ago was not our best night. I think we went like one and four. So we will take a nice little more green than red night. Yesterday, was able to witness the Astros and Red Sox game in person, which uh, seeing those uh, runs come in where, you know, nice to see. I'm a Red Sox fan, but I like seeing the runs come in to cash that over, so we shall take it. The Royals team total kind of mini laddered that, step stooled it, if you will. Um, might start using that, step stooled it. And then the Orioles team total over three and a half cashes as well. The Angels money line went to extra, so I kind of liked our spot there. Only a half unit loss. And then the Cubs, White Sox, Nerfy. Uh, the Cubs score three in the top of the first, so Nerfies haven't been our jam recently. Still doing well on them in the season, but man, oh man, I feel like we're just flipping a coin at this point, which Technically, it's kind of what those plays are. Our ride of the day does not come through. Gotta drop the womp womp, and I hate dropping it because I like this spot with a red hot batter, Ellie De La Cruz. Jay had him over one and a half total bases for plus 130 odds. Ellie De La Cruz, four at bats, no hits, three strikeouts. Yikes. I mean, we liked the spot, we liked the matchup, but just did not come through for us. So, shout out to Jay for the attempt here, but. Definitely not shout out to Ellie De La Cruz. But if you guys don't know what the ride of the day is, make sure to use that hashtag ride of the day or hashtag ROTD in the comments. And then I jump on board with whichever comment gets the most likes. So make sure you're down there liking other people's plays because they might see an angle that you may not see or something like that. So hit the like button on those. And then I pick the person to jump on board with. You get a shout out in the next video, win or loss. If you win, we keep riding with your plays. We celebrate, have a good time. If you lose, you just heard it inside. You got to face the womp womp and we got to face the music. But uh, it is what it is and you know what i liked the attempt there jay let's go ahead and jump into this slate guys like i said 16 games we have one double header that's what we're starting it off with here hit that like button hit that subscribe button let's rock and roll and jump into it we're gonna have the yankees taking on texas now it looks like we're finally going to get some decent new york weather 85 mile an hour uh, 85 mile an hour 85 degrees with nine mile an hour winds blowing directly out so all of a sudden we go from games being postponed and whatnot to what seems like could be a nice little spot for an over. Uh, the thing is, you have Carlos Rodon on the mound, who's a very good pitcher at home, going up against Nathan Avaldi, who has struggled on the road and struggled against the Yankees, but we know he is a good pitcher, right? So I'm not all like gung-ho here um, about the over. It is going to be the side of the total that I lean on. Don't think I place it myself. And if I were to come down to a money line play and needed to make a play, I'd probably take a peek at the Yankees. The problem being, just because they have the way better offense, and like I said, Avaldi doesn't even have the, uh, have the best numbers against them in the past we'll get to it in just a second but the problem is that minus 155 is a, pr is a pretty damn strong price tag going up against a really good pitcher like Evaldi. You know what I mean? Like, this isn't a huge pitching advantage or anything like that. Now, the one argument to be made, like I mentioned, is Evaldi in the past against this Yankees roster, 194 plate appearances against. So, plenty of a sample size, right? A um, average against of 280, a WOBA of 322. That's not all that terrible. A expected batting average against, though, of 300, an expected slugging of 500, and an ex-WOBA of 350. So, he shouldn't, I mean... He, he doesn't have the best numbers against them, and he shouldn't shove against them. So if that's the case, a pitcher's not going to shove against the Yankees, I end up leaning in the direction. But it is a pretty big price tag. Rodon also is going to throw a ton of fastballs, 55% fastballs. Texas, uh, 24th right now, last 30 days, runs above average against the fastball. So doesn't seem like it's the best spot for Texas. Uh, the best thing about it would be that you're getting a plus 140 team that I do think can compete to some degree. Just not enough for me to pull the trigger on it. And throwing the fact that it's a doubleheader, probably not touching this one today. But I would lean Yankees and the over both very slight leans all right next up we have toronto taking on oakland i liked oakland yesterday they end up scoring one run so how was i right about that one right luckily we did not get to the window to bet that one and even in the video i said that's what i'm trying to do i just don't have enough there to make it happen um jose barrios i think pitched like what six seven innings actually so he looked pretty good today we have toronto you can actually get them at minus 146 i believe on fanduel so that graphic is a little outdated as well that we put together yariel rodriguez on the mound for them he does have a 1.12 whip uh, at home here this season He's an average against of 200. Uh, versus left-handed batters, he's really good as well. There's kind of a mixed bag. I believe there's either three or four lefties, though, uh, in Oakland's in lineup. So not a crazy amount, but there are a few there. Um, I just don't see enough 
on either side here. I hate to go with kind of two fringe plays to start the video, but it just is what it is. Like Toronto seems like they're still a little bit too pricey with Yariel Rodriguez on the mound and that bullpen, right? Um, I like Oakland's offense, even though they've kind of taken a step down, right? But Osvaldo Beto on the mound, which is very fun to say out loud, not very fun to watch, is pitching for them. And I just don't really think that I can get behind them. So this would be a Toronto lean for me. Again, I kind of wanted to get to Oakland, but just like the Yankees, like I don't think that this price makes a whole lot of sense. Even if they were win three one again, it's like, well, Toronto didn't play like thank God that Barrios in the bullpen looked good. You know what I mean? Like they didn't play like they probably should have to make this a an easy no sweat type of a win. So I see something like that again. Meaning I'm also going to kind of lean towards an under. Now you have a pitcher, two pitchers on the mound that aren't as good as what we saw yesterday. Um, this total is at nine, but even if this is like a five four game, five three game, we have a push and then a slight you know win there. I'm going to lean towards the under, but Toronto in the under is where I'd go in this one. But I, unfortunately, and I don't pick the order of the slate, right? They have their game times. We're starting this video off with two sort of like mad type of plays. But I'll tell you what, we could talk about what is not meh in one of my favorite DFS player prop apps out there. We got Sleeper and Paul Skeens, like I said, not meh, right? One of the best pitchers in the league and one of the youngest pitchers in the league has a free square today, 0.5 strikeouts. His normal line is 7.5. They've knocked it down to 0.5. Go check out Sleeper today. Capitalize on this free square. You're also going to get 100% of your first deposit matched. An absolute no-brainer. I'm going to have a link in the pinned comment for you guys. It's going to get you this Skeens square. Square, and they also drop a bunch of discounts. Wouldn't be surprised if they just drop another discount today, right? They have a 0.5 Joe Burrow square live as well for him to get like one passing yard. And you get this Paul Skeen square. So go ahead and check it out, guys. That link is in the pinned comment. Sign up with that link. It's going to auto apply the code Guy Boston, and you'll get all of the goodies. And speaking of sleeper, so I went to the Red Sox game last night. I mentioned that, right? Uh, me and my girlfriend with some friends, and I give Paris my girlfriend. I was like, hey, here's here's fifty bucks in the sleeper account. You go wild. You pick what you want to pick, right? Uh, I thought I was being a nice guy. Well, I clearly was being the best guy in the world because she turned that fifty into five hundred plus bucks for herself. And you know what's crazy? She she just goes off of vibes. If you guys remember her birthday ride of the day in the ML, uh, the NBA season and all that, she has a three for three hit for 11.44x the $50. So you know what? Shout out to Paris. She got a nice little paycheck going to that game. Um, Jordan Alvarez over in bases. I think they cashed like in the uh, the, the top of the, uh, the ninth. Altuve, which was the riskiest play on here. Uh, she was like, yeah, I think he'll walk second play of the game and then Devers ooh, has an RBI in the bottom of the ninth just not enough to come around and score either so you know what shout out there I can't believe it this is this is the type of thing where I put so much work into something I'm like damn it I'm wrong all the time fade me she's like I'll go off vibes and cashes but you know what we love it um all right let's go ahead and jump back into the slate uh we got a few more games to go aka pretty much the whole board but yeah shout out to sleeper and shout out to Paris all right, San Fran taking on Detroit here. I think we're still waiting on pitchers. I've seen multiple names. Uh, Logan Webb for San Francisco. That's not even confirmed yet. And then I've also seen um, Brant Hunter, who I think was supposed to start yesterday. They ended up going with Brees. Bresk, Brisky, right? Uh, so don't necessarily want to put too, too much weight into this one. Depending on what the line comes out at, obviously I'm going to like Logan Webb, um, but I have a feeling they're going to be like minus 200 or something like that. So maybe San Fran is some sort of a uh, parlay throw in or something like that. Cause if Detroit's not, throw I mean, I don't think Detroit, it's almost like they just don't feel it anymore, right? They lose Jack Flaherty, and then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, uh, we got some good starters, but we have some injuries. We have Scooble. It's They're in kind of a weird a weird little uh, uh, spiral right now. And Logan Webb is a good pitcher, and I think that he should be probably uh, looking for a spot in which he continues what he's doing. He was getting shelled for like, you know, a week or so, right? Last couple starts have looked very good. Now it's against Oakland and against Washington, but we can't really sit here and say that Detroit is much of a different offense uh, than those two teams in the last uh, you know month or so. So give me San Francisco. Depending on what this total's at, yesterday's total I think came to 7.5, which was pretty damn low. If this thing's around there, I don't touch it, but if we're looking at like an 8.5 or, hell, 9.5 total, uh, I'd lean towards the under because I think Webb could have a decent day today, um, and then we're looking at a you know an offense already on Detroit that doesn't look like they're doing too well, and then, you know, if he has a good day, then that's one team that's already kind of taken out of the equation, right? And just to make matters worse for Detroit, right? We don't know who's pitching for them yet, but if it's Webb, he throws the sinker 40% of the time. Detroit, literally the worst team in the league in the last 30 days trying to hit the sinker. So perfect for Webb. Maybe we just look at like Webb's outs over or something like that. You know, under hits allowed, under earned runs. That could be something. Keep an eye on the pin comment. That may be a, a way of betting the Giants without having to pay that price. 
All right, Red Sox taking on the Astros. We have Spencer Spaghetti Arietti on the mound for the Astros, going up against who's starting, Josh Winkowski. But then I believe we have, is it Keller? Um, Keller is the the primary pitcher. So kind of like a, boy, it's a weird day for the Red Sox, I guess, in terms of um, their pitching arm, right? But yesterday, you know, we saw a high-scoring game. I thought the Red Sox would compete, in, or I should say contribute to that high score a little bit more. But, you know, Tanner Houck uh, goes in there, pitches six innings. I want to say that he let up only... Th- he had a decent he had a decent game but um obviously the rest of the team you know after that the bullpen yeah he only had one earned run through six innings pitched uh so Tanner Houck did his job I kind of thought that he would get a little bit more shelled but uh, in terms of what we saw was a very high scoring game right a nine to uh eight to four nine to three 12, 12 run finish um today we have a total sitting at 10 and I kind of immediately jumped right back to it uh, I do think we have some decent weather again uh in Boston it looks like the run index is plus 17 percent uh if that's the case and we have Spencer Spaghetti and Josh Winkowski slash Keller on the mound like I have no I have no fear in in taking the over here the problem being 10 is obviously kind of a key number there a 5-4 game doesn't cash it uh 5-5 game uh I mean you'd go to extras but it's just like that double digit number you You'd like it to be like nine and a half. So if you got to double digits, it hit the over, right? But nonetheless, still would, in my opinion, I guess, be a little silly to take an under based on what we've seen out of these two teams as of late. Now, when it comes to the money line side of things, um, I think the the pitching committee here should be good enough to kind of suppress Houston a little bit after yesterday. Like that is honestly as weird as it is. You might be saying, like I even mentioned in yesterday's video, right? That Houston's offense is rounding into form. But what if, you know that they just blew their load in the last three games or four games or so, right? What if Boston doesn't have to go out there and score nine runs to win this one, and they can go out there and score five, six like they had normally, um, and they only scored four runs, which they've been killing righties as of late. So I like the Red Sox in this one. My prediction is probably uh, going to be like a, uh, honestly, like a 6-4 game, which doesn't even get us to the over. But, I, you know, if it's 7-4 or 6-5, then great. Then we hit that over. But I think that it lands right around 10. I just think it's silly to consider an under with these two teams. So, Sox and the over. All right, Miami taking on San Diego. I think we're still waiting on a confirmed starter for San Diego. I've seen Waldron um, on some sites, so we'll roll with that for now. Uh, Rodri Frankie Munoz on the mound for Miami here. Uh, and... This one seems pretty straightforward, right? You'd think so, but Miami gets the win yesterday. I said I hated the spot. I know Miami lost 6-2, to two, right? I'm thinking of a different game, so there we go. Yeah, I still hated the spot for San Diego. San Diego gets the win yesterday, but they're still minus 180 today. And it's like, yes, I guess that makes sense because yesterday would have been the spot that I hate. Today would have been a back San Diego spot. But you know what? They're so much better than them both offensively and even with the pitching on the mound. Waldron's had his ups and downs, but he's going up against Munoz, who really isn't all that great. 3.4 ERA over his last five five point seven in it on the season here um and if waldron's pitching he's gonna throw the slider fastball and sinker all pitches that um you know that miami really really struggles with we can jump into uh, our dashboard here and by the way guys if you want access to this dashboard uh, tab by tab down the bottom breaks down each and every game so you know where the advantages are uh for each and every team and that type of thing so like i said right you know you could see his pitching numbers all red uh waldron pretty good but this is what draws the eye right all that green and then obviously the the pitch mix for Waldron uh, fastball slider sinker you come over here fastball 28th in the league last 30 days runs above average slider 27th in the league runs above average and then sinker 27th as well the cutter is going to be his least frequently used pitch and they're only at 19th so though they've been batting a little bit better this pitch mix should give them some trouble there so I'll lean towards San Diego uh, maybe the way that we do it is a first five run line something like that so we can get some digest- digestible odds but even still like then we're just trusting that Waldron which like like I kind of mentioned, I, it's not that I don't have any trust in him. He's just not like one of those lights out, like Dylan Cease in the bump for them, right? Let's give him the first five, right? So when you have an offense like San Diego, I think it's also worth considering the full game. I just don't like the odds for the full game run line. So San Diego, some way, shape, or form, maybe their team total. I don't mind the first five run line. And then in terms of a total here in this spot, Again, another tough one. And I know you guys, some of you guys don't like it when I say it's a tough one. But if I think it's a tough one, I think it might help if I admit that it's a tough one, right? Uh, Sitting at nine, like I could see a 6-3 type of a game, um, something along those lines. So I'm going to lean towards the over because what if San Diego kind of goes off? But what if Miami does not touch Walter? So there's a lot of what ifs here. Keeping it close to San Diego is probably the best move. Their team total instead of the full game team total, right? Their run line instead of taking that minus 180 risk of a price tag. That type of thing is how I would go about this one. 
All right, game number two here for the Yankees and Texas. Um, Garrett Cole's in the mound for this one going up against Bradford. So I think the Yankees, uh, they kind of switched. Like, like Rodon was supposed to go yesterday, right? That game gets postponed. He's pitching in the early game. Then Bradford was supposed to pitch uh, in that game yesterday. He gets postponed. Now he's pitching in the late game. It's almost like these two teams said, hey, like, let's, uh, let's make it so that we can each win one because Garrett Cole against Bradford, you obviously know who has the advantage here. Now, even more, the, the, the import here keeps the odds because uh, we have obviously two games on it, so it gets kind of confused. But the real line here is definitely not going to be minus 155. I think we're probably looking at something closer to like minus 180, minus 170. But it still is a um, doubleheader, so hell, maybe it stays at minus 155. If you can get, uh, you know, Bradford versus Cole and you can get the Yankees at minus 155, even though I hate betting doubleheaders, I still might roll that. You have a far superior offense and what should be a far superior pitcher. So Yankees in this spot. The total, I'd still lean towards the over. Um, but again, like it's the second leg of a doubleheader. Maybe these guys are tired. Maybe some guys get sat. Not always the best spot, but I don't see how you can you can look at, uh, you know, a Garrett Cole versus Bradford and, and like Texas here. Maybe I'm missing something. All right, guys, before we jump into this game, if you've made it this far into the video, go ahead and comment 16. Name your favorite player that, or the name that comes to mind, I should say, right, when you think of 16, because that is an interesting, uh, obviously a pretty interesting jersey number, right? Now, right now, in immediate, like, thought, I go Jaron Duran just because he's a Red Sox player and he's been crushing it, um, but there's, that's that's like an obscure jersey number, but there's tons of good guys uh, out there that have worn it, so I want some some obscure names that uh, maybe I don't think of immediately, right? Drop your favorite favorite player that wore or wears number 16 in the comments down below. But let's jump into this Washington and the uh, Angels game. Now, yesterday I took a shot with the Angels, right? And we even missed the value. I wanted them at plus 100. Still like the reasoning and rationale, so we ended up rolling with them at minus 104. Only a half unit play. They lose in extras. I think, you know, in the like they were up 2 nothing and then 2-1 and then um, tied and then they lose 3-2. But today, you know, we do have uh, on the mound is going to be Patrick Corbin going up against Griffin Canning. So you have two absolute guy I just don't <laughs> these guys have the names but I don't know how they're not managers at like a McDonald's. You know what I mean? These guys really aren't anything worth uh, trusting. I think I want to say Canning's looked okay as of late, but even still, it's like, look at the competition, right? Um, Seattle, not a very good offense. Colorado, we got dinged up by, and then the Mets in the middle of their like, you know, low point. So uh, I don't even know if I want to put too much weight into that. Corbin, 4.4 ERA over his last five. Uh, Arizona, that was when they put up that football score, 17 runs. That was against him. They put up 10 earned runs with just one home run so it shows how much they were hitting around right one home run um i believe it was either a grand slam or three run but if that memory serves me correctly but 10 earned runs in three innings um and then even san francisco through six innings four earned runs on seven hits two home runs so both these pitchers definitely guys that uh you could classify as fadeable here uh, i think i look at the underdog and we want to monitor the odds here because right now it's just to pick them minus 104 minus 105 but if the odds get at all moving towards uh the angels i see some heavy money coming in on the nationals and a lot of the times you want to follow the money that's sharp action blah 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 but if we can get plus money for the angels i don't mind it because i think anything can happen with corbin on the mound and this angels offense and this washington offense are both kind of similar to me you know what i mean so uh, i could get behind a plus money angels play again um but it would have to be you know for some serious plus money not rolling with the minus one of four again and then in terms of a total nine and a half like I said, these offenses are mediocre. They didn't score many runs yesterday, but these two pitchers can let up runs in a hurry, so I'll lean over. All right, moving on. We got Kansas City taking on St. Louis here on the mound for Kansas City. Looks like it's going to be Michael Waka going up against Andre Peante uh, for St. Louis here. Um, he is, well, the team, I should say, is 1-4 in, in his last five starts, um, but he's actually had a couple good starts over the last five. Kansas City, Michael Waka has been pretty damn consistent. Just the opposite. Four of his last five starts team has taken the dub on, um, but what I would say here is minus 135. Like, I don't know if this is another price like yesterday where I just feel like, or not necessarily price, but even with the, the bullpen, right? That being considered, I don't know if I feel all that comfortable backing Waka. We didn't like backing Lorenzen yesterday, so we just rolled Kansas City's team total over, and that may be the move yet again here today. The problem being is that Kansas City's hitting some off-speed pitches really, really well as of late, but Peante likes to throw the fastball. Now, Kansas City ranked 22nd in the last 30 days. That's not all that great, but also, like, they have just been scoring runs, getting on base, all that. So maybe it's something to say, okay, you know what? Let's not dive into the pitch mix too much. Let's just trust what this team has just absolutely been doing. 
right now uh, for their over four and a half. You're still getting plus money. This is their team total. And they've hit it in five straight and in eight of their last, maybe four straight, but eight of their last 10 games. So that's probably how I would play this, maybe uh, to take the hybrid approach of back in Kansas City without having to truly trust Waka. Even though he's been consistent, I think that this could be a spot in which, uh, you know, St. Louis's offense uh, doesn't look all that bad, right? They scored seven or eight runs yesterday. Um, and like I said, didn't really trust the starting pitcher, didn't hate on it, but Michael Walker kind of seems like he could be in a similar boat to me today. Um, so I'm going to trust Kansas City to score runs and then whatever St. Louis decides to do, Go for it. Give me Kansas City team total over. Keep an eye on the pin com to see if we roll with that. In terms of a full game over, I don't know if I'm like obsessed with that. It might just be another spot in which we only focus on Kansas City. But I do think the Cardinals could have some success against Waka. Just not really guaranteed, which what is in this in this sports betting world, right? All right, Milwaukee taking on Cincinnati. So Nick Martinez on the mound for Cincinnati. He um, wasn't starting, right? And then comes back and starts last, what was it, five or six days ago. Five innings pitched, four hits, zero earned runs, 5K, zero walks, 14 pitches per inning against Miami. But that was his first start in a while. Going up against Tobias Myers, who has just started. Uh, I shouldn't say just started. He's better than I'm giving him credit for, but has really started to look very good. Last four starts, only four earned runs combined. He's at 1.6 ERA um, in his last five, and that includes a game in which he had four earned runs so I think that he could be a decent pitcher here but like I mentioned Nick Martinez looking pretty good so I'm gonna lean towards the under um which I, I think these Milwaukee unders have just been kicking me in the absolute you know what because their offense is on absolute fire but I'm giving a little bit of trust here to Nick Martinez now has that paid off no, I like to trust Char Charlie Morton in that game, right? Then Carson Spears in that game, even Chris Sale in that game. And the Brewers offense just seems to be back. So I keep getting kicked in the you-know-whats, taking the under here. But uh, to me, I, I do think both pitchers and their pitch mix could serve pretty well against the teams here. Now, when it comes to uh, betting a money line play in this game, uh, though the Reds, I do think, you know, like I said, uh, have a good pitcher on the mound. And even their offense against righties in the last 30 look pretty good. I don't want to get in front of what this Milwaukee team is doing offensively. So I'll lean towards Milwaukee, but I do want to give some numbers here because uh, I tell you guys, it's okay to back the Reds when they face a fastball throwing pitcher. Uh, he throws the fastball more than any other pitcher, 43% of the time. Now he does throw the cutter, he throws the slider and change up those three other pitches. The Reds stink at hitting, but Tobias Myers throws the fastball more than anything and the Reds hit fastballs very well. So if you want to make a play for that and get some decent plus money, then, then maybe that's the reasoning and rationale. But to me, Minus 145-ish for the Brewers. Uh, it's probably going to be where I end up in this spot. And the under. But I'm, I'm stupid for taking the under, right? I'm an idiot because of the Brewers and their offense? Probably. Minnesota taking on Cleveland. Uh, yesterday, we called game number one of the doubleheader perfectly spot on, a 4-2 game, um, which I thought was pretty cool. But I even made this short, right? I was like, can't take a victory lap too much because, well, we were wrong about the, the well, not wrong about it, um, we were right about it, but didn't bet it, you know what I mean? So that was the wrong part of it, but nonetheless, still pretty cool to get the game pretty much, like, the game script down, you know what I mean? Like, they leaked the script. Um, the Twins win both games yesterday, and then today on the mound, uh, looks like it's going to be Simeon Woods-Richardson going up against Gavin Williams. Williams has been okay on the road, but uh, what you saw yesterday is what I would expect again. Cleveland's offense struggling, and Minnesota's being at least average at, you know, worse, you know? So, Give me Minnesota in this spot. A minus 118 price tag seems like it's a little bit too good to be true. You know, like I would say even after last, uh, you know, yesterday, you're looking at a spot in which um, Minnesota showed that they probably should stick right around the, uh, the, uh, the I guess, the minus 130-ish range. But, uh, you know, minus 118, you get it from minus 115 as well over on MGM right now. Seems like a good price tag. I'm going to lean in that direction. Uh, if you're one person that's like, oh, but it could be a sweep. Not a sweep. This is a four-game series. This is game number three. They could win this one and lose tomorrow. Like, this is not sweeping a team. So, uh, give me Minnesota here in this spot. In terms of the total, uh, I'm going to lean slightly towards uh, the Minnesota team total over. I don't want to go full game over. I just mentioned it with uh, the Guardians, but with Williams on the mound going up against the Twins offense, I think that they could do some damage on him today. All right, White Sox taking on the Cubs. They only got two innings and a third out of Garrett Crochet yesterday, the White Sox. Um, but that game ends up being pretty damn close, right? The White Sox uh, scored pretty in that, like, four through fifth inning, but uh, the Cubs just got their seven runs in the first three innings. You know what I mean? Like, they got out there. We had the nerfy in that game. It was 3 nothing after one, so there was a good call there, buddy. Um, but overall here at plus 200, this is Justin Steele on the mound for the Cubs today, going up against, I believe, yeah, Chris Flexen for the, um, the White Sox. 
bucks. And if we jump into the dashboard, I built this thing. And by the way, I don't know if I said it when I first showed it. $2.99 a month you can get this for just by becoming a channel member here right on YouTube. And we post a link every single day. So it's just three bucks a month, less than three bucks a month. And you get all of these games every single day. And it definitely helps because this is a good example of where is the strong suit and I guess the, the weakest points in this game. Well, Flexen is right across the board, right? Absolutely red. Justin Steele is great. He's even better on the road. And then this White Sox offense against lefties stinks as well. So there's nothing here. Even if you look at the bullpen right here, there's nothing here that gives us any reason to back Chicago. So though I usually say, and in this type of series and this rivalry and same city type of thing, I'd say, yeah, they're going to play harder and play tougher. There's just, they just don't have the pitching on the mound nor the bullpen to get it done. I don't think so. I'll lean Chicago. I lean Chicago. They're going to win this game. Now I lean the Cubs and it'd have to be in some sort of money line parlay or something like that because uh, they're, they're, they're absolutely juiced through the moon and rightfully so minus two thirty, minus two twenty right now, way too much to play. Um, they're minus one and a half. So their run line minus one forty. like even that's outpriced to me. So uh, this would probably be like a money line parlay p uh, piece if we felt like we needed it, which not exactly sure we're going to, to need it. You know what I mean? In terms of the total, we did see a lot of runs yesterday, but this is Justin Steele on the mound, so... I might look at Chicago White Sox team total under. It's just going to depend if we can get a good number. Like if they, um, and I, don't, I haven't seen the team total odds yet. We could probably check really quickly here. So I'm not speaking out of my ass here, but uh, let's see. Chicago White Sox runs under three and a half, minus 133. I was hoping for a little bit better of a price tag, but that's where I would go in terms of a total. I don't want to mess with an under just because I think Steele's going to pitch well, because what if the White Sox absolutely mash Flexen? I think I said White Sox. I meant what if the Cubs absolutely smash Flexen? All right, Tampa Bay taking on Baltimore, and boy, okay, so we cashed this yesterday, right? Tampa, uh, uh, Baltimore over three and a half for their team total, and I almost pulled the trigger on four and a half, and that was like plus money, and then I was like, no, let's take the juiced one. Glad we did. They end up winning four to one. I also almost wanted to bet them money line, but Baltimore, talk about kicking me in the you-know-whats. I feel like every time we bet them, they screw us. Now, maybe we're on a little bit of a win streak with them today, and they have Corbin Burns in the mound. I don't think we have um, a pitcher listed for the um, for the the Rays just yet. I think Tyler Alexander's list as the primary. I'm not exactly sure who is going to be the opener. I've seen Drew Mas Rasmussen and whatnot, but this is a uh, bullpen, you know, game for, for the Rays like they like to do. But Burns is on the mound for the Orioles, so that's going to skew some serious odds. Um, but not as much as I would have normally thought. You could still get Baltimore minus 155, which kind of shows that this team hasn't been the Orioles that they were, you know, recently or anything like that. I think they've only, yeah, they've won like six of the last ten. They're starting to look a little bit better, but I feel like every time we bet the money line it's like the kiss of death and they lose um but overall like minus 155 for baltimore i think you're getting the better starter the better bullpen um the the better bats in this spot uh, even though baltimore struggles against lefties but i say it all the time i think tampa bay really struggles against righties as well um rasmussen i forget if he's a lefty or righty but either way alexander should be the primary pitcher and he's a lefty um but still Back in Corbin Burns for minus 155 doesn't seem like a terrible move to me. Might even consider them on the first five run line, uh, hoping that, you know, Burns can really keep Tampa Bay down and maybe only a couple runs could win this first five for them. So that's how I'd play it. In terms of the total, it's sitting at seven and a half right now. I'd much rather probably want to back Burns and say Tampa Bay team total under or first five team total under than saying under in the full game because... When the Rays do the bullpen stuff, it's like kind of a mixed bag. And what if Baltimore's offense is kind of starting to, to tip in the right direction? Colorado taking on Atlanta. Uh, Max Fried on the mound for the Braves going up against Dakota Hudson. The way that I looked at this and, and probably, you know, haven't really deterred from that path is potentially looking at Atlanta team total over. Uh, they lose yesterday. I feel like they're going to want to bounce back and win today. But the price tag at minus 185 for a team that has lost six games in a row. That ain't going to cut it for me, but I do think that they can put up some serious runs. They scored five runs yesterday. I think that they can get to Dakota Hudson, who I really am not all that thrilled with. And right now, in terms of odds, you can go uh, over five and a half for minus 130. They got five yesterday and lost. I think that they can probably get, and that was off a better pitcher, too. I think that they can go out there and probably, uh, I shouldn't even say he's a necessarily better pitcher, but, you know, Dakota Hudson ain't all that great. Um, but, you know, I think they can go out there and rattle off six runs. You're in high altitude. I would never take that if this was not in course field, but that's 
where I'm looking. That's kind of the hybrid of getting the Braves at a price that matches, uh, you know, what I actually think the price should be because I'm not playing a minus 180 play here. Now, the problem being is that this Braves offense still has been inconsistent. So six runs is still asking for a lot. But if they're that big of favorites in a total of 10 and a half, right? It's almost like the books are saying you're supposed to score six runs today. Like if this game goes according to plan, it's like six to five, seven to four type of thing. You know what I mean? So yeah, or seven to five even. So I'll take the Braves team total over. Uh, probably the only way that I look at this spot. And I don't even know how thrilled I am with five and a half number, but it is the only thing that I'd consider. All right, Arizona taking on Philadelphia. I am loving this. Um, you know, so I did kind of get it wrong yesterday, right? We had Wheeler and Nelson, and I said, if it's an under, it's going to be a Phillies win. If it's an over, it's going to be an Arizona win. Well, it wasn't. We didn't bet it, so I'm glad of that. But it was an under 3-2 uh, to two game yesterday. The Phillies did not win. Um, they almost, I mean, they didn't really look like they were going to win. They tied the game, though, in the eighth inning, and then um, Arizona wins it in the ninth. So it was just a good game overall, right? Uh, didn't get to watch anything live, but was able to see some of the highlights uh, or lack thereof more defensive. Um, but today you have Aaron Nola on the mound going up against Zach Gallen, two good pitchers again, back to back here. Uh, and what I would say is that I think this Arizona offense um, is potentially just too much here to kind of fade in this spot at home uh, third game of the series they do play again so this is not a sweep spot either uh, not a sweep a, a three game series either but uh, my biggest thing here and biggest concern would be that Philadelphia's offense against righties we talked about it yesterday right like they're crushing lefties their offense gets righties they put up two runs yesterday and got lucky seventh and eighth inning they put up one run each so to me even though I love uh, Aaron Nola of the pitching staff of the Phillies I even love the Phillies they've made up so much they've made up so much money this season uh, I think I got to take a peek at Arizona and Zach Gallon in this spot. Uh, it's sitting at eight and a half for a total. I want to say the same thing. Like if you back Arizona, you're looking at an over. If you back um, the Phillies, you're looking at an under. I still kind of believe that, but this could easily be like a, a five, four game, which is just barely getting over. So I'm going to go in that direction, but I do think that, you know, Zach Gallon could have a decent game, which uh, he's definitely, uh, I would say, do for he keeps going really bad start good start really bad start good start he just is coming off a really bad start against Cleveland um, not really bad he pitched seven innings but by the time he came out of there he had five earned runs right so uh, I think he's due for a little bit of a good spot here and Aaron Nola has actually kind of been inconsistent reasons so if he's inconsistent even a drop I do think the Arizona bats get to him so Arizona in the over, maybe team total over and then maybe team total under for the Phillies because even if the Phillies win like a three to two game right Still, they didn't score many runs. So keep an eye on the pin comment. I'm loving this series. I'm glad we have two more games of it. I definitely could see myself rolling with something in this spot. Next up, we're looking at the Dodgers taking on the Pirates. Now, when you see odds like this, it's safe to assume we're looking at Paul Skeen's day, which we are. River Ryan on the bump here for the Dodgers. Uh, obviously, it's never a bad idea to back Paul Skeen's, um, but I would say this, and I think that this is pretty true, and he's gone up against, you know, at least a couple decent offenses. River Ryan hasn't looked terrible in the Dodgers uniform, right? He's got a one-flat ERA uh, so far as a starter, so I don't necessarily hate it, but can you really fade Paul Skeen's? I don't necessarily think think so right now so um i'm gonna say i'll lean towards the pirates at even money plus 100 on fandle right now don't mind that uh do i get to bet it myself getting there probably not just due to the fact that he's going up against the dodgers it's obviously a really really good offense so some worth considering there like i'm sure a lot of people on social media and stuff are going to fade paul Skeens because uh he went up against the 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 Dodgers already and um you know wasn't exactly his best start that was back in what early June five innings three earned runs two home runs it's like yeah it wasn't the best and that was in Pittsburgh but uh, I think that he's obviously gotten a lot better than then since uh, it's better than since then, right? Which is crazy because he's already so good. But give me the uh, Pirates in this one. And then by doing so, I think I'm going to lean under just because if Paul Skeens doesn't have a good day, this thing's flying over and the Dodgers win. I would say that. So we're back in Skeens. Even though we faded him plenty of times and he's kicked us here, hopefully we're not reverse jinxing ourselves. Give me uh, Paul Skeens and the Pirates as well as a slight lean towards the under. I had Seattle taking on the Mets. They win 6 nothing yesterday. Uh, this offense looked good yesterday, right? Um, Quintana even pitched well, but that Seattle offense seemed to be uh, relentless as it got down the stretch. They scored, uh, it was 2 to nothing, and then, you know, just for some insurance runs towards the end of the game in the 7th or 8th inning, they scored uh, they, they're the rest of their 6. So uh, good on them there. I give them a little credit there. Now we have Logan Gilbert on the mound going up against um, Sean Manaya. It's like, to me, 
very similar to what I just said yesterday and about the um, the Philly and Arizona game yesterday and today as well. If this game's an under, like I kind of think it will be, give me Seattle all day long. You're giving me Logan Gilbert at minus 130 odds uh, all day long. If you think this game's going to get blown open, you think there's going to be some runs, then I don't mind Sean Manaya and the Mets offense either in this spot. But to me, uh, I don't think that, you know, Gilbert's going to have any trouble with the Mets lineup that's kind of in, I don't want to say, like, shambles but they're just kind of wonky right now right you never really know what to expect you look at their last few games it's like okay nine runs and five runs uh in their last two prior to this last one but they played against Colorado in Colorado it's like yeah they're gonna score runs cut those in half and they scored what you know four and a half and and two and a half runs like that doesn't look all that great so this team offensively has been kind of weird and Logan Gilbert should be able to go out there and and shut him up because he's doing that to what seems like everybody you know what I mean so I'm gonna trust the under spot here uh and lean towards, um, you know, Logan Gilbert and the Mariners. I also don't mind the Nerfy, though I keep going back. The Nerfies are like a drug or something because I keep going back to them. But this spot, like Sean Maniah hasn't been terrible, right? He's actually having a decent season and Logan Gilbert should be good. And then the Mariners offense, like I'm still not there to believe in them, but they've been looking good. But for one inning, come on, go out there and score zero. You know what I mean? Give me the Nerfy in this spot. Like I said, I like the under, but Nerfy probably a little bit more. Also don't mind the first five under, really trusting these pitchers. Um, so we'll see what we end up rolling with there that would have hit yesterday it was two and they end up scoring six runs total that still would have hit the under but that first five would have been sweat free because the Mets didn't even score the whole game but all right guys that is going to wrap it up for me today if you did enjoy the video make sure to hit that like button hit that subscribe button as well appreciate all of the love and support and I say that you know in like 90% of videos but what's funny and or ironic or I don't even know what the word I'm trying to use here is is that I mean that I said it a couple videos ago each and every day I have more of an appreciation and more like of a, a fired up mentality to get on here and record and it's because we're bringing new people into this community every single day but I still feel like we're right next to the OGs and the people that have been watching for a while like uh, I think we're really building something special here and even when people try and tear it down and, and call some BS and get grumpy it's like right over the head like we know what we're doing here and we know uh, how good we're at and we know how good this community is so you know what appreciate all of you guys and before I like I always say before I get on too much of a rant I'll close it out love you guys and I'll catch you guys in the next one right peace out